Hey, it's Chris Tarzan Clemens and Lisa Jane, and we're gonna give you a quick tour of our home on wheels, Turk, the Toyota Tacoma truck camper. So I've actually been living in this truck for about two years. The first year I was by myself and I just had a regular shell on the back of the Tacoma. This last winter, I found a slide-in pop-up truck camper and built that out. Uh, first, I'll just go over the exterior of the, the Tacoma itself and show you what I did. And then we'll hop inside and show you how both of us live in a slide-in pop-up truck camper. So I bought this 2002 Toyota Tacoma a couple of years ago. We're at about 236,000 miles. The first thing I did when I bought it was install an ARB front bumper with a Smittybilt winch and we've also mounted the high lift jack to the front end to get myself out of any sticky situations I get myself into. Uh, Lisa and I found this jawbone up in Palmer, Alaska. So this is Palmer, the jawbone that gives us a little bit of a rugged look. And I've also installed KC highlights on the front bumper and an LED light bar on the top of the truck. Uh, additionally, I added a snorkel, which I thought was kind of silly until we tried to cross a river in Alaska and a whole tidal wave of water came up over the hood. So. I'm glad that I did install that. Uh, I also learned that you could install a Dodge 1500 full-size truck towing mirror to a Tacoma. It just takes a little bit of drilling and cutting, but that has been very helpful with having the truck camper installed on the back. We put in some custom-made rock sliders. These are welded by, by, by my stepdad and my stepbrother, and we welded them straight to the frame, so they're very substantial, very strong, which is why the truck camper itself is mounted straight to the rock sliders. So with having two of us living full time in this camper, it means the extended cab of the Tacoma has become more storage. So behind the seats, we have our inflatable kayak, a cooler, camera gear, running gear, outdoor gear, as well as all the recovery gear that we would need for the truck in case we get stuck anywhere. So my original setup on the Tacoma was just about a two and a half inch lift with Bilstein shocks and some custom wheels and BF Goodrich KO2 off-road tires. But because of the extra weight of this camper and everything we own, I additionally had to have a complete rear suspension made specifically for this truck. So we have custom leaf packs that have been arched to carry this weight. And I went to a load range E BF Goodrich KO2 tires. And this truck is very heavy, but it drives comfortably on road, on the highways or off road on dirt roads. And additionally for off-road travel, we have a five gallon jerry can for extra gas mounted to the back of the camper. And my stepdad and stepbrother also custom welded a heavy duty steel rear bumper with floodlights mounted into it and hitch points. And the truck camper itself is mounted and tied down to custom steel pieces coming out of the reese hitch. After spending three years traveling and living in a Volkswagen van and showering out of a solar shower bag that never quite worked right, I knew one of the luxuries I wanted to add to this truck camper was hot water. So we have a hot water heater that not only takes hot water to the sink inside the camper, but it's also an on-demand hot water outdoor shower. And having a hot water shower makes living in a vehicle much more enjoyable. We do spend a lot of time camping in the middle of nowhere by ourselves, so we added a couple of safety features. First of all, being the floodlights mounted on all the corners of the camper, if we would hear something outside in the middle of the night, we can simply flip a switch and everything will be lit all around the camper. We also thought about taking this down the Pan American Highway. And if we're going to do that, we put padlocks on all of the doors, uh, storage points and utility doors. So no one should be able to mess with anything. Everything is padlocked and completely secured. So now it's time to check out the house. So welcome to our tiny home on wheels. This is our 1989 Sunlight pop-up truck camper for a pickup size truck. It was really hard to find. They don't make this brand anymore. And most everything in here is original framework, but all custom redesign and renovation. And I watched way too much HGTV as you'll see. So I've just stepped in the back door. This is our living space, kitchen, dining room, and the bedroom that you'll see in a little bit, but it won't take long to do the whole tour. The truck camper came stock with a three burner propane stove. We cook on this at least once a day. 
Right next to it is a sink with a water faucet that runs off of a water pump. Originally the camper came with a 12 gallon water tank. I changed that out to a custom made 22 gallon water tank. It comes with two sliding drawers for all of our utensils, kind of odds and ends. It also has a built-in propane heater that we've used several times. We typically don't like to camp where it's cold. I'd prefer to be where it's warm, but on the nights where it was below freezing and we risked uh, freezing all of our water lines, we've definitely run this heater several times. I also moved a lot of the electronics from under the bench seat to right under the sink. So all of our solar panels that come in come to the controller here. And this is the stock electric panel for um, shore power as well as 12 volt power. This couch along the passenger side of the truck was originally a full size couch and we could actually pull it out to make a second bed. But I knew storage in this camper was going to be extremely limited. So my stepdad built me this cabinet, which is actually built specifically to fit my pots and pans in the bottom. But it ended up being a two level storage unit and we really use it as our pantry. So most of our dry goods, foods, and everything else we need is right here. We have a fridge, it's a built-in Dometic refrigerator that runs off of propane as well as electric. While we're driving during the day, we run it from electric and at night we run it off the propane. It's not really big and it's not always really efficient, but we use it all summer in Alaska. So sitting on the couch, we have our kitchen table that we use pretty often. We take it down sometimes just to get a little bit more space in the camper. But this is the original step up to the bed. It used to have a 12 gallon water tank underneath it, but I put in the 22 gallon custom made water tank. Additionally, there's enough space to take some of our tools, some of our cleaning supplies, and all of the electric from the auxiliary battery and the solar panels, everything meets here on a little electric grid that I built in. And then for both Lisa and I, we have these two cubbies that access the bed of the truck. So directly through here would be into the truck bed. And for me, there's some tool storage up front, some outdoor gear, but mostly it's shoes on this side for me. And for Lisa, it's the same, but camping gear and her shoes as well. Right at the end of the couch, we do have a little bit of a storage closet for a few things. Typically the bottom part is full of um, jackets, raincoats, um, hats and gloves, things for cold weather, which we don't typically like to use, but we might need them every now and then. And the top shelf is normally Lisa's personal items, bathroom kit, uh, anything she needs on a daily basis. And on this side, we actually lost this closet for storage, but today it houses our inverter and a lot of the electronics for the camper. We have solar power coming in, going to the auxiliary battery underneath it. So it made sense to use this for our electric closet. Um, and on the side here, we have two outlets, one for shore power, one for the inverter, and then we have some 12 volt um, items on the top panel. And coming to the front of the camper, this is actually a little overhang, the part that goes over the cab of the truck, but this is our bed. Once the top comes up, we have plenty of space to crawl up into it. It's not a really big space, but the best part is all of the windows. So in warm weather, when we can leave these vents open, it's just so incredible to go to sleep with a the breeze. There is a lot of storage underneath the bed. This is essentially our closet. So each day when we need something, we just lift the bed up and now we have access to all of our clothes and anything else we need. So I finished the renovation project with my stepdad um, on this camper over the winter and I think it was about April that I took off and pretty much headed directly to California, which is where I met Lisa. Um, we met in May and from California we drove this camper all the way up to Alaska, went all the way to the Arctic Ocean in Prudhoe Bay. So we're a solid six plus months into living in this tiny little space together. It's been an awesome summer. We're about to do something totally different than live in this camper. I spent a lot of time on this camper. There are a lot of things I learned about renovations of a sliding truck camper. So if you have questions, let me know. I probably can't tell you what to do, but I can definitely tell you what not to do. If you have questions, just let us know. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>